Hey everybody, Chris Orlov here, and welcome to this free video series where you are going to learn to power up your pipeline, break through the noise, break through the clutter, and build significant pipeline despite economic headwinds through super effective cold email and cold outbound prospecting strategies. Now, the person you're mainly going to hear from in this free series is Florin Tatulia. Okay, so Florin has an interesting background as an outbound prospector. He's probably one of the top experts specifically on cold outbound email and email sequencing on the planet right now. Okay, he rose from SDR to Senior Director of Sales Development at a company called Lupio within just a couple of years. And then he moved on and now he's Director of Sales at a company called Barley, where he personally booked 100 meetings in his first six months, despite having more responsibility than just booking meetings and all through an economic downturn. Okay. That is insane success. And so Florin has taught over 500 SAS reps and SAS SDRs, some of his cold email frameworks, some of his cold sequencing, fra sequencing frameworks. And in this video, he's going to teach you what his cold email framework looks like. You're going to see an example of him critiquing somebody else's based on his framework. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how you can see several good examples that Florin is going to share in just a couple of days. So stay tuned, pull out your notes, write down some notes, get crafting some emails as you go through this and let's learn from Florin. Uh, the cold email framework. So getting right into it, this is it. I have four sentences that are always included in my emails with an additional fifth, which is the PS, which is personally one of my favorite. We're going to do a ton of deep dives into this. I'm going to provide you with examples, but here's like how it starts. So usually sentence one, you want to get right into it and provide context as to why you're reaching out now, specifically with a trigger. And we're also going to, in this course, go deeper into what different triggers might look like. Sentence number two and three, this is where you're telling that story. So remember law number three of copywriting was around telling a great story. Well, this is where you're doing it. This is the bulk of that cold email. So sentence two is what is the problem with the world today? And you're going to ask a thought provoking question. That's going to get your prospect to think about their current state a little bit. And then sentence three is going to be, how do you actually pitch the solution as a narrative uh, but also use social proof. And that's what we like to call the, the ideal state, right? So um, showing what the future is going to look like. Then finish off with an interest-based uh, CTA. We'll go into examples of that as well. And then the optional PS. So the PS statement is usually where I like to have like one-on-one -on -one personalization so that it doesn't get mixed up in the body of the email. Once again, I'll show you what all of that looks like. All right, so before we go into examples and really break down every single aspect of an email, I want everyone to do a bit of an exercise. So here is an email I got from Natalie at Course back in the day. So I want you to take a few minutes here and try to point out what are the great parts of this email and what do you think can be improved? All right, so the pros and the cons, here's my thought uh, on this email. So there's obviously pros there. I think it was very personalized and uh, she clearly did research. She saw that I uh, recently wrote a LinkedIn post uh, putting that was putting SDRs on blast. She connected that to the value prop of course, as you can see here. Uh, it was obviously a one-to-one -one email, so that's always good. And uh, she complimented me as well. Everybody has a, a bit of an ego. We like to, to get that stroke, so I think that's totally fine. Now, in terms of the cons, so one, this is quite long. You can see here uh, on a big screen, this already looks like an essay to some degree. Now, imagine this on a mobile phone, which is where most people actually first look at an email, right? So way, way, way too long. This is a block of text. It's very possible some people don't even bother reading this, especially busy executives. Uh, the other thing here is it, there's too many value props. So as you can see in this email, 
we kind of go into, you can get total visibility to every inch of a customer, identify what your reps are doing, sync these real-time actionable data points, um, and building a team of top performers as a result. So that's a ton of eggs to throw into one basket to one email. And it just all gets lost, right? So what I recommend is that you stick to one value prop per email and you can split up all these different value props across a sequence, which again, we're going to go through and I'm going to show you examples of. Uh, the other thing too, is just too much bolding. So the whole purpose of bolding is that you want to call attention to something. If you're going to bold three, four, five things in an email, it's it's not really doing its job anymore. So avoid that unless there's one specific thing you want to call out. The other thing here is the CTA is not very clear, right? So uh, it's specific. Am I available at Friday at 2 p.m.? What if I'm not? Then that's already creating scheduling friction, right? Then it's like, either way, such a big fan. Hope you're having a great quarter. Then the PS attach some more information. So it's like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to book a meeting with you? Uh, do you want me to look at the information? Make it as simple as possible for a prospect to engage in a conversation with you. Do Give them only one thing to do in the call to action. And uh, yeah, th there's no social proof. I think that's uh, another thing that we should focus on here. I think if there was a way to connect this to a... Uh, somebody in my role at a similar company, that obviously would have been more powerful. We learned that in the laws of copywriting. All right. So there you have it. There are four steps to a super effective old email that can break through the noise, break through the clutter and help you build more pipeline, even through economic headwinds. Now stay tuned because I'm going to release the second video in this series in just a couple of days from now. Okay, and what you're going to learn in the second video is even though you saw an example in this first video, it was kind of a critiqued example. Florin in the next video is going to walk you through three good examples. Okay, he's going to give you an example for um, for different industries and different markets. He's going to show you how he uses the framework and you're going to learn exactly what good looks like. So stay tuned for that. Keep your eyes peeled for the email I'm going to send in just a couple days. And if you got value from this cold email framework, let me know, reply to this email or just comment uh, if there are comments below and just give me a big yes or anything like that. And more importantly, we're still creating this video series as we go. So if you have any questions that you, that you want me or Florin to answer, write them down, reply to me with your questions, and I'll see you in the next video where Florin breaks down three examples of what good looks like. So stay tuned.